So if you guys watched my earlier video, the college EDC video, I went over or actually introduced a new survival kit that I worked on and have been working on for a little while now. And today, that's the topic of this video will be that named survival kit. And as always, guys, before we get into this survival kit video, please do not forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe so you can see more awesome Alaskan content just like So that. guys, like I said, today we are taking a look at my uh, survival kit, my what I would consider to be my survival kit, smallest comprehensive survival kit that you can possibly get. Basically a kit that is extremely comprehensive, but will still fit in the size or into a backpack, most any pack, uh, into a truck, into basically any place that you would need a survival kit or want a survival kit. Now this kit, for this kit, I wanted a really, really solid box that was not going to get damaged easily or or to get water to let water in easily or get damaged very easily and so for after a while or after a little bit of looking I decided on the Otterbox 3250 and so that's what this kit is made out of it's a smaller kind of it's bigger than I was expecting but it's still a pretty small size dry box and uh, it's a pretty good size it holds a lot of gear in it as you could well imagine and it's once again very 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 element proof. This kit can go underwater up to 90 feet deep for 30 minutes and so so it's very tough, very rough kit that will survive most elements very well and that's why I chose it to be the foundation for this particular kit. I know I was going to slam pack this kit full of contents and I wanted a kit that had really tough locking hinges and so this kit also has stainless steel hinges so it's very tough and you can really force this kit down so you, like you can pack a lot and really force the thing down and still snap it it also has very reliable snaps on it that are really sturdy and strong so for an overall uh, box or kit like outside kit this is the element that i wanted to start with it also has kind of smaller grab handles if you will on the sides those could be additionally used I thought but I did not actually do it because I want to keep this right reasonably minimalistic but you could even add something like a paracord lanyard onto those two different uh, tie-ins on those sides you can do a whole bunch of different things with the outside of this kit alone but I tried to keep it reasonably stock because the inside is where most of the fun is at the kit like I said this is what it looks like and uh, it's pretty packed, so these are a little bit hard to get off. But as you guys can see, that's what it would look like normally. I just generally shove it down and put these down. But uh, normally it's a little bit high. Yeah, that's because like I said I have this thing very, very jam-packed. So opening it up, this is basically what it looks like. Or not basically, but this is what it looks like on the inside. So first things first, besides all these random 22 rounds, uh, I have combat gauze on the top. And uh, <clears throat> this is, of course, for any serious injuries. Uh, uh, with this kit, I was going after having not only a really sturdy survival kit, but also having some more uh, medical gear, because something that I think I've really lacked in a lot of my other survival kits is having a solid amount of medical gear. And so I have combat gauze, I have just normal gauze in here, and then uh, for other medical stuff, I have about five band-aids over here. So not a ton of different things, but just a handful of really nice pieces of <laughs> gauze and suffered stopping bleeding. So next piece I have is six feet of army trip wire that would be used as snare wire, or you could even use it as trip wire, but generally just using this for multi-purpose thin metal uh, cordage and it's always nice to have cordage and thin metal cordage like that can be really well used for sna uh, snares and traps so the next piece i have is just a bit of 
chaga and it's a smaller bit of chaga and I just threw it in here because it fit well and it's a pretty good fire starter. Next to that I have a striker for of course the ferro rod. Um, <clears throat> I do have a knife in here that will also strike the ferro rod but I also like to have just a little backup striker just in case so that I know I'll have something that I can strike the uh, ferro rod with. Now I will point out I have two different lanyard uh, options in here are two different lanyards that kind of are laying and the actual things are attached to are just a little bit hidden and so the first one is the uh, Fox 40 Mini and I keep these on lanyards like that so that if I do need to get in here these are smaller pieces of kit that I usually put deeper down into the actual body of the kit itself but these are things that like I said like the, with the whistle and with the ferro rod they're things that I'm going to want to draw out in a fast instance so I don't want to necessarily be rifling through and like have to pick up this bundle of paracord here I just want to be able to rip up and grab my ferro rod and have it without any of the fuss or having to try and find it so of course this is obviously the next piece this is <clears throat> This is a Light My Fire Army in bright orange here, and of course, it's just a ferro rod. Really thick, really heavy duty. I have a striker for it there, but I'll also get to the knife striker in a little bit. So next thing I have, just a couple of Starbucks Vias instant coffees, which are always nice to have. And so there's just a couple Starbucks Vias there. Then next, I have a large amount of this is around 20, 25 feet of paracord or 550 cord just right there. And that's in a butterfly hitch or butterfly bundle. Then I have, of course, a UST wet fire here. And then next to that wet fire, I also have about, I think this is around 20 matches, uh, waterproof matches, and they're all just kind of sitting right there. Next to those matches, I have some quad aught steel wool, and that also helps for fire starting. It's a really good tinder. Then next to that, I have some iodine tablets, and next to the iodine tablets, and it's falling into the crack, I have a sail needle or a canvas needle, canvas slash sail needle, and then I also have a the uh, striker for the waterproof matches right here. That's what this is. So all of that just kind of sits right there. And then next to it, this large orange thing is a Mylar blanket and <laughs> great for shelter setup and also just staying warm. I also have quite a few, I think this is around three or four plastic bags, all with a rubber band. I should note I have a rubber band around the uh, Mylar blanket to keep it from undoing itself. And then I also have a rubber band around all these different plastic bags to keep them from undoing themselves. Uh, all while we're onto plastics, still onto plastics, I also have a plastic sandwich bag all folded up here with once again another rubber band to keep it from undoing itself. I also have a small compass here and next to the compass or this piece of leather here inside of this piece of leather is a spider co double stuff sharpener and then right next to the sharpener i have a spider co ironically <laughs> spider co sharpener and a spider co knife this is a spider co paramilitary two and then Next to the paramilitary two and the sharpener, I have uh, 16 rounds of 22, and these are just Remington Hyper Velocity rounds, and I would or I carry these in here as one. I can use them. I can pull the bullets off and use the gunpowder for fire starting if I didn't have a gun. But also I carry the 22 in here so that if I run this system like with a in a truck or a vehicle, I would generally run this survival kit with the Henry US survival rifle. And so that gun holds uh, eight rounds in each magazine. So I'm carrying basically two magazines worth of 22 ammo uh, for that Henry survival rifle. Or if I was carrying one of my other 22 rifles, I would have ammo for it. Next to that, I have three large safety pins just kind of tucked over here and <clears throat> just always good to have. Then uh, behind and kind of 
uh, tucked into this kind of area underneath all of this stuff. I'm not going to pull it all up, but I have two zip ties uh, there, and these are thicker, more industrial grade zip ties, so I could use them for whatever applications I need. Guys, that is my OtterBox mini survival or mini comprehensive survival kit and hopefully you guys enjoyed the contents sorry i went over them a little bit quick and without a whole lot of explanation it's really cold out here and when you look over a survival kit you have to do it with like your bare fingers and uh yeah it's not that fun so anyways i kind of sped through this but i think by this point you guys have watched enough of my survival kit videos to know why I carry some of the kit that I carry and oftentimes not a lot of it changes from kit to kit because in all honesty a lot of this stuff it, like wet fire and matches and stuff they're just really good to have in all your different kits so there's really no need to change from kit to kit to kit a whole bunch of gear and so <clears throat> anyways I didn't go over a whole lot of the explanation but I went over a whole lot or all the contents and that is all the contents of it though I didn't remove it all that's because I just didn't want to put it all back in there in the cold so anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed this look at my mini comprehensive kit enclosed in an otter box and i like i said i really love the otter box as a platform for survival kits or this otter box dry box as a platform for survival kits because it's a very tough and sturdy and durable kit and once again that's kind of the point that you also you not only want a kit that will carry all the gear that you need to carry but you want a kit that will keep it safe and keep it dry and keep it sheltered from the elements because a lot of things like gauze they'll lose their effectiveness if they get wet and so same with different especially fire creating things uh, but really a lot of things if they get wet can be damaged or their usefulness can be compromised so anyways guys hopefully you enjoyed my look at this sweet little kit that's easy to throw in a backpack or easy to take with you on many different adventures and i'll have a link in the description below where you can get an otter box 3250 yourself if you want one and if you want to build your own survival kit i think they're a really good platform for building survival kits because they're about like that perfect size they're not too small but they're not too big so anyways guys that's all for now and god bless and i'm out